Law from the Hote Residence Network. And today's a great day as we are interviewing one of our partners based out in California, David Carcier, who is the principal of Crew Land Company. Crew is actually the culmination of more than 15 years of wine industry and wine vineyard related real estate experience. Understanding firsthand the intersection of the real estate, farming, and production sides of the vineyard and wine industry gives David a unique perspective when evaluating and analyzing potential real estate investment opportunities. This perspective has been further shaped and refined over the past decade by working with and learning from some of the most savviest clients in the industries. The client list includes prominent Sonoma and Napa wine producers, private real estate investment groups, and some of the largest agriculture and vineyard investment funds in the nation. In 2020, Crew Land Company was born to provide this level of experience, uh, expertise to a larger audience of clients looking to enter or expand their presence in the wine and vineyard real estate space. David, um, it's a pleasure to have you part of um, today's uh, webinar, and I am excited to learn more about your business. Thanks, Seth. I appreciate it. I'm happy to be here. And I remember when we first spoke uh, for you joining your network, it was interesting because you're like, well, I'm not really a realtor. What I do is very different and unique. And um, I'm excited to kind of learn about that. But before we do that, and get into what you do and what makes you so unique and special. How did you get your start? Tell us a little about your background. Yeah, so I started, I, well, I went to college. I got actually an engineering degree at Cal Poly, San Luis Obispo. Uh, I did the engineering for less than a year. I mean, I was partway through my program and figured that was not what I was going to do for the rest of my life. But um, we finished out the program, got an engineering degree. Um, after about a year, I was looking for something different. Um, I actually went to work for a buddy of mine who was working at a big winery in Napa. Just It was kind of like a temporary harvest job. Um, so I got some exposure to the wine industry, um, you know, had a great time with it, but wasn't really sure that was what I was going to do, um, you know, for the rest of my life. Ended up getting in on the real estate appraisal side. My uncle was in real estate investing and appraising for well, I guess he's been doing it like 40 years. And um, so kind of started working with him. Um, then I went back to Texas A&M, got a master's in land economics and real estate. And then when I came back here, which would have been 06, I guess, um, I did full-time appraisal of like large recreational ranches and agricultural ranches. I did that for three or four years. And then in 2010, I jumped over to the brokerage side and um, had a business partner at that time we started selling really small high-end vineyards um, and it was kind of a good start. But as we, as we got going, I realized I kind of wanted to scale the business and sell bigger tracts of land, you know, kind of in a larger geographic area. And um, so started to build the business for scale. And then, as you mentioned in 2020, I kind of rebranded as crew land company. And that's kind of been the goal in the direction we were for really high-end wineries, but also large institutional investors and I think it was a good change. I don't think I was meant to be an engineer. I think I was probably meant to be selling, you know, selling a very unique niche of real estate. And then now that you um, have built a uh, crew land company, what exactly do you spell, sell specifically? Yeah, so I sell wineries. I sell vineyards. Um, you know, some of them, like I said, are really kind of high end, smaller, more boutique wineries or vineyards, I should say. Some of them are larger production track vineyards. Um, and then we sell tracks of land that get converted. So we call it plantable land, bare ground that somebody buys it. They come in and they develop a vineyard, you know, kind of to their specs. Um, we do, we do sell vineyards with houses. Um, you know, there's, so I'm in Sonoma County, Sonoma and Napa County are known for kind of wine country. And there's there's plenty of estate homes around here with estate vineyards. Um, that's kind of a smaller segment of our market right now. Again, we kind of focus on kind of the agricultural driven land. So we look at it on a spreadsheet and say, this is gonna meet a return threshold. And then obviously it's gotta check all the fundamentals for being a good piece of land. But a lot of it on the institutional side and the investment side is all driven by a spreadsheet you know, and kind of filling a portfolio piece. And have you ever like looked at a land and thought it would be amazing and it became a bust or vice versa? Um, yeah, I mean, we've certainly had things that, you know, looked better on paper than 
than they proved out to be. Um, we like to kind of vet that out in due diligence. Hopefully we catch it kind of early on in the process, like, oh, this has all, all the makings to be a fantastic vineyard, or maybe it's developed and this looks great, but we dig into the numbers and it's not performing, or maybe the water's not there that we need to farm it, or we've had a couple of deals that we had to blow up because the access, there wasn't legal recorded access, so that can be an oh, issue. Wow. Um, so we like to try to catch all those things in due diligence, but, but, you know, even after a vineyard's closed, I mean, it may perform better or worse than kind of than what you thought it was going to do. And then how is this different than residential or commercial real estate? You know, explain it a little bit detail because someone might be confused. Well, why can't I just hire, you know, a realtor, a Caldwell banker to sell me a plot of land, you know, for my winery? Yeah, sure. That's a good question. I mean, um, there actually are a lot of components of kind of commercial real estate in here. I mean, again, kind of the spreadsheet nature of it, and we're looking at return hurdles and return threshold. So a lot of that is kind of similar to commercial. Um, but in terms of like the residential side, it will, and even from a commercial perspective, what kind of separates me is just knowing the market as well as I know it. I mean, I know exactly what we're looking for. Um, you know, if somebody comes to me and says, you know, I want like 100 acres that I can farm efficiently and that I can yield well, and it's got to be in like a good neighborhood, a good appellation. I kind of know, first of all, I know where to look. And then as we start to, to pick through the properties, you know, I start to know what to look for to pull out why it may or may not work. Um, you know, and I just, so I know the neighborhoods really well. And I also, I, I have access to a lot of deals that most people probably don't know about just because I'm constantly looking and talking to people and looking for new opportunities. And again, if, you know, if you're at Coldwell Banker and you're selling houses, you just aren't maybe going to have kind of the insight as to what may or may not be available. And, and again, once you identify something, then kind of all the steps to get through to vet it out and make sure that it's, you know, it's actually viable. And then, if, you know, why, what makes, what, like, what was the reason why you chose the wine vineyard industry instead of just going in to residential or commercial properties like finding restaurants or finding people yeah. their new homes good, good question um i so as i mentioned i was doing agricultural appraisal before i moved on to the brokerage side so there was some yeah, actually there. not to interrupt you um david i was going to ask you what exactly is agriculture appraiser you know for someone that might not know what that is oh yeah so it's just like an appraiser who would like appraise a house or a building, but I was just doing it for all, you know, I was doing it for vineyards or large recreational ranches, oh, you know, wow. thousand acre ranch. I got to assume that's hard. It's not easy to get comparables. No. Yeah, it's not. And actually we run into the same thing on the brokerage side now trying to value, you know, there's the vineyards. I mean, we have metrics that we can try to compare, but it's not like there, the, no vineyard is exactly the same. Um, whereas again, if you've got a house that's in a subdivision, that's three bedroom, two bath, 10,000 square foot lot, there's a lot of sales for that. There's not, yeah. not a lot of sales for we what we do. So there's a lot of nuance in trying to put the valuations together. And I had I had a lot of background because of the appraisal side. And, and so that's been helpful. Um, but what I've what I've learned, you know, being full time on the brokerage side for now almost 15 years is, you know, I knew the market okay as an appraiser. I know much better as a broker because I'm I'm dealing with the actual principals who are making the buy or sell decisions. You know, what's their motivation? Um, so you just kind of like appraisal is backwards looking. You know, being on the broker side is forward looking. Like, what does somebody want? How do we find it for them? And if they're not going to move forward, you know, what's the nuance there that kind of turn them off? And again, you don't always get that insight on the appraisal side. So it, it really kind of makes you know, I think my valuation sense, sense is even better now than it was when I was an appraiser. And so let's say someone, because I'm noticing um, I'm in South Florida and a lot of people um, that have achieved a lot of success in their businesses, you know, want to get like a little winery. So someone that, you know, is not looking to build like a commercial winery, but wants to, you know, get like a nice little vineyard to make wines, you know, as a hobby project, what, what type of an investment does that usually look for in a ballpark? Oh, you mean like, like capital wise, money wise? Yeah. Just wondering what that, you know, what is it? Cause I assume that's a specialty that you do to. Sure. to yeah. So, so it, it totally depends where you are locationally. Um, like our two neighboring counties, Lake and Mendocino County, you could get a winery that's maybe, 
2,000 to 10,000 cases. So relatively small, but but certainly bigger than any single person needs if they're kind of just making a small amount of wine. Um, you know, you can get those for probably a million to two, and they say a million and a half to two and a half million dollars in Lake and Mendocino County. Now, if you drop into Sonoma County, um, like I sold um, a small winery with a permit last year um it had i think it had a 2500 case permit it had just sort of like a garage they were making wine in and about 10 acres of old vineyard that was like around two and a half million dollars um okay. i'm working on like an eight million dollar winery in outside of Healdsburg right now that's it's totally commercial totally turnkey but again we're talking like eight million for something like that and if you go over the hill to napa I don't think anything probably starts below 5 million that's actually got like one. Yeah, so that's what the number interesting. Yeah. And um it's much bigger than that. But that's kind of like if you could find like a bare bone something you're probably talking. There was something on the market uh last year in Napa that I think just had a production permit which in itself is very valuable the regulations challenging these days and I think that had a small vineyard and a permit no buildings I don't think and that was something like three and a half or 4 million bucks. But it was a great location, so it can get it can get pricey. And what um, what are some of the tools that you use? Like, what makes you unique um, or better than your competition? Yeah, so I think, like we talked about earlier, I think it's sort of my immersion in the market. Like every day, all I'm doing is kind of looking for new vineyard deals, looking for new winery deals, and I think because it's you know, because I'm so specialized and I just have more exposure to it. So I think that's a huge leg up. I mean, what I what I tell clients and prospective clients is, you know, they're hiring me because of my expertise. And because, again, I do this all day, every day. I don't sell houses, too. I don't sell commercial buildings. Um, you know, all my focus is on on wine industry properties, again, primarily vineyards, secondarily wineries. And then, you know, vineyard estate type deals would be kind of my third you know, the third avenue that we take, but it's really just kind of that I'm in it all day, every day, you know, finding deals. And then again, finding out why they work or don't work. Interesting. And um, who are your clients? Like, how, how did you build your business? Like, if you, to take a step back, tell us, like, how do you get your first client? Because obviously it took you to get your first client to, right. to become, you know, where you're at now. So tell us a little about the first time you got your client. And I'd love to learn about what you you know like if who are your clients so someone that's watching this can you know can say oh, okay and feel comfortable to call you sure yeah so um actually the first couple of clients we got way back in 2010 were new emerging wineries and but we we got introduced through them through some vineyard managers kind of when i had my business partner our initial outreach which I think was a was a smart idea was we reached out to all the the high end vineyard managers who are farming high end vineyards and said, hey, do you have any clients who are looking to buy vineyards um, or buy ground to plant a vineyard? And so they they gave us introduction into some wineries, and then kind of from there, I just started like an on the ground campaign of calling winemakers, you know, calling winery owners. Um, and so we started with like a winery clientele base. Um, around 2012, 2013, I started looking for larger institutional investors. And that was sort of the same thing. I had I had a buddy from grad school who worked for an institutional investor. And so he kind of he kind of gave me an idea of how to approach them. A lot of them were investing in in the wine space, in the vineyard space. And so, you know, once I was able to kind of get connected with them, um, it's kind of that thing where if you can bring me a deal, I'll buy it from you. And so oh, wow. we had to get connected to them. And then we had to, at that point, had to be able to find deals that met all their, their buy boxes. Um, and so from there, it became a lot of referral. Now it's, now I've got connections with probably a dozen pension funds, institutional investors, um, dozens of wineries. And, and it's now people are you know, kind of calling me and the business is out there a little bit. But early on, it was talking to vineyard managers, talking to wineries, seeing who was trying to buy. Could we help them? Um, that's kind of how we got started. And do you find that you work more with buyers or sellers? And how is the process different? Yeah, so um, I do have kind of a backwards model for most realtors. I mean, I think most realtors, the goal is to get listings and put a sign out in front. Um, we historically, since the business started, um, probably 75% of my 
transactions have been buy side representation. Um, and that's, that's kind of balanced out in the last three or four years, but, um, you know, that's, that's skewed a lot more towards the buy side than I think most traditional realtors would have. And again, the reason we started out that way was because like, tell us what kind of land you want to find and we'll go knock on doors and we'll find it. And that, that was just kind of the way I started in 2010 and it seemed to work. Um, I like representing buyers because again, they give you a set of price, you know, parameters and I, I can find all the pieces of land that fit those parameters and see what's available. Um, you know, the list listings are great too. You, you kind of, you know, you put it out there and, and I've got direct avenues to shop them as well. Um, but on the listing side, I'm, I'm very particular about what I, what I take on. I want to be able to shop it directly to my client base. I don't want to just post it on MLS and hope somebody calls. I want to be able to send it to my wineries, send it to my institutional investors, send it to my private investors and say, Hey, this is kind of what you're looking for. I want to have that direct Avenue in addition to just putting it up on MLS. You know, I want to be able to add value through. You want to sell it to your network. You built a network is what you're yeah, saying. Exactly. And, um, and then uh, tell us like, what was like one of your bigger deals or a memorable deal? Cause obviously, you know, you work in such a unique area, be interesting to see some, some monumental or memorable deals that you've been involved in. Yeah. So there's, it's kind of funny. There's a couple of different ways to go with that. There's deals that, um, you know, I sold a deal to a client in Anderson Valley, which is in Mendocino County, really high end, you know, in Chardonnay, but like, it's kind of off the beaten path. Um, the winemakers around here know about it. I don't know that it has a lot of, you know, national traction, national following, but I think it's becoming a little more well-known. Um, well, so my dad and I ended up leasing that vineyard back. We sold it to a pension fund. We ended up actually leasing it back and farming it um on the vineyard side and that was great the, the vineyard itself was great the deal was the deal was interesting it was a beautiful vineyard um we got that whole that whole second look at it farming it and I learned that I after four years I learned I actually don't really want to be a farmer I just want to sell <laughs> you know vineyards and and be able to advise people on it um so that was kind of a unique experience and again I think it it lends to you know to my perspective now I've kind of been on the inside of actually I have a spreadsheet and let's see how well it actually works right so I mean that was a lot of real live experience um so that was kind of a fun deal again because of the vineyard itself and kind of what came afterwards um the biggest deal I sold was um around 20 million bucks and it was middle of Russian River Valley uh it was 200 acres of vines and the buyer actually pulled out was in the process of pulling out about half of it for redevelopment you know it was kind of old it was in decline um so i think we bought it pretty we bought it pretty good um and i think i know what they're continuing to farm is exceeding expectations and i think they're really excited for you know the new redevelopment blocks to come online um so just in terms of like scope and scale that was that was pretty fun um and then you asked kind of about our initial deal that was now that was the end of 2010. And that was just a small, like, I think it was 10 acres total maybe. And they were able to plant seven acres of like hillside, really cool climate um, Chardonnay in this oh, wow. kind of Occidental. And that's just kind of, it's it's like a really, it's on this place called Taylor Lane, really renowned little vineyard lane. Um, and it's just, interesting. again, it was the smallest deal I've ever done but they put a really high end vineyard on it and the vineyard thrives today. And so that was kind of fun. Just No, that must be kind of cool. Like being able to, you know, uh, a couple of years later or five years later, drive by and say that was a piece of land. And now it's like, you know, they're, you know, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, point it out to you... kids all the time. They're not impressed. It's weird. I'm sorry. What? I pointed out to my kids all the time when we buy, drive by something that like, Oh yeah, I sold that deal. And yeah, they're not that impressed. Yeah, well, they, I mean, yeah. well, I think I'm impressed because you know, because what happens is, at the end of the day, you're you're achieving people's dreams because you know a lot of people have these dreams to become like a winery, you know, and it's it's a billionaire man's sport, it's a rich man's sport. But with the pricing that you said of a million dollars, it's actually affordable where you don't need to be a billionaire. I mean, you obviously need to be a millionaire, yeah. but it's actually very. Um, it's a very affordable because, you know, I, I we also own Hope Wine Society. And what I've noticed is is a lot of our friends that we meet that are high net worth, that are successful, 
you know, they like to, they like to have like a little winery or like they like to have their own wine. Um, so it's pretty cool to be able to have a package where you could do that, you know, in that price range. Yeah. And what you notice is these people have been very successful and they have capital, but they're smart with it, right? They don't overspend. That's how they, yeah. that's it's how not like they're, yeah, well, that's what I'm well, exactly. Yes. Yeah. So you have, even with the people that have high net worth, you know, all, all this capital, you got to be really smart about how you're advising them because, you know, they got that way by being very smart and very diligent about, you know, their approach to everything. Well, I assume with your business dealing with pension funds and invest and, you know, actual wineries and producers, you're dealing with a very sophisticated crowd and buyer, um, which makes the next question talking about what is the future for the crew banner? What is the growth plans uh, for the company? Where do you envision your company in five, 10 years from now? Yeah, so um, so I just brought on a new agent, which I've never done before. Um, you know, I had a business partner that I started with almost 15 years ago. We were, we were together seven or eight years. But um, since, since I iterated with Crew, you know, I've never really had kind of a, a junior associate broker. Um, this guy's really smart. He's an MBA. I think he's going to be really, he's got wine industry ties. So I think he's going to be really successful. So that's kind of an addition to give me some additional capacity to go out now. Like we'd like to expand geographically. So we're on the North Coast primarily Napa, Sonoma, Lake, and Mendocino counties. Um, but I'd like to, you know, I'd like to focus on the central coast, which is Monterey County, uh, Santa Barbara County. And, you know, then there's the Sacramento Valley. which where Santa they, Barbara has amazing uh, land for wineries, I assume. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And there's there's some good people doing it down there. But I think there's always opportunity, you know, if you can be kind of smart about the way you're building your business. Um so there's there's geographic expansion for vineyards, but there's also, you know, all my pension funds also invo- in, invest in almonds and walnuts and pistachios and so the orchard opportunities. And so that that expansion could be in the Sacramento Valley or even potentially the Sacramento or the Central Valley. And so there's kind of geographic and crop type expansion opportunities. I think my, you know, my base will always be here on the North Coast with vineyards. And I think that's that's the remote, the most robust, robust market, but those other opportunities, um, you know, if we can do it, do it well, I think there's a lot of opportunity there in those other markets. I, I got to tell you, David, you have a very unique business. Cause you know, I mean, when you talk about pension funds, you know, wanting to get in the walnuts um, business, but as you said, you know, it's all comes down to a spreadsheet. So if you present to them, I assume that's really your specialty is coming in and finding a piece the land, building out a spreadsheet, going to a pension fund and showing you put 5 million, I could get you this rate of return of your investment. And that's really what makes you unique outside of just, hey, I got a good piece of land. Yeah, I would say so. It's, it's kind of the whole package and being able to advise on, um, yeah, you know, here they give me a- I got to believe that's a huge niche. I don't know too many people that specializes in that. No, thing. there's not. There's a handful of guys in Sebastopol or Sebastopol, in in California, more so in the Central Valley, who do sort of the the large large farms. But yeah, there's not there's not many people that do kind of what I do. And and again, particularly being based here on the North Coast and the the high end, you know, vineyard and wine space. Because I think that's what's remarkable of where you built a niche. Because yes, you said there's people that are coming in, like you know, if Mondavi wants to buy land, you know, I got to assume there's. But what you have a very nice niche that. I think is very good for our readers and our viewers watching this because it's, you know, it's not, you know, it's not like you could see, um, you know, competitors of like you and billboards are there. So it's very important that they get with the right person so they could achieve their goals, at least be profitable, not be in the black if they right. are in the red. So. Right. And my goal is to, you know, to, to always set people up to to succeed, you know. Well, David, I really appreciate you being part of our network because you built a great niche. You're very um, great in what you do. And so I really appreciate you sharing this because besides potential buyers or sellers, there could be someone that um, has a similar love as yourself, whether it's an agriculture and farm, and they could look at this as a very motivational path to take their path and to pivot, you know, going from what you did appraisals to agriculture to building a very unique business. and it's expanding. So um, I look forward to continuing watching you grow and being your partner. 
All right, Seth, I appreciate it. Thanks for the time. It was great. Thank you for your time, David. Enjoy All your right. holiday weekend, too. You Bye -bye. bet. Have a good one.